everyone. It's April 14th, 2020. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So today I thought I would do something a little bit different, and that is to try to teach this song by ear, by a traditional method, where you kind of learn phrase by phrase. And that's, that's definitely outside of my area of expertise. I'm very much from a classical background. I use sheet music all the time. But it's an interesting thing to do, an interesting thing to experiment with. And so, of course, sheet music is a fantastic way to easily learn. So this piece, I could easily just sight read it from the sheet music. But in the same way, if you practice learning by ear all the time, you would just get better and better at it. And there are fantastic musicians who don't read sheet music, but can hear a song once and have it stuck in their mind and be able to play it. And it also forces you potentially to memorize in a different way because you have nothing. You, you, you have to remember it, right? It's just the fingers and the sound in a different way. There's no visual. I mean, there's the visual of how it looks, but not on the page. And also potentially it makes it easier to transpose if you're thinking about, again, maybe less individual notes and more sort of shapes and um, relationships. And I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate that here. So I would invite you to pull up your harp and sit down and play along with me as we as we kind of learn this phrase by phrase. So this song is Down by the Sally Gardens or Maids of Morn Shore. That's the A phrase, we get it again. section. Back to the A. So you can see there's not actually that much material. It's just four bars, the A section, and four more bars for B, and it's an A, A, B, A form. So, now that you've heard it, let's go through these phrases. So, first of all, I'm going to teach it to you in the key of D, which means we have C and F sharps, and everything else is natural. So, because I'm tuning E flat, it means everything's up except the G's and the D's. And a couple of things before we start. So, we're in the key of D. This D and this D are, are sort of relevant markers. Also, in this piece, the fourth note up from, from D, from the, the key that we're in, doesn't get played. And that's, that's just something to be aware of. It's, it's, a, it's a note we avoid. So in this case, it's the G right here. One, two, three, four. That's something to be aware of. So also, also this little, this fourth, so a fourth up from D doesn't get played. And a fourth down from this high D, which is an A in this case, is also kind of a note to hang on to. So we start, we're in the key of D, we're putting the third finger on D, and we're going up three, two, one, three notes in a row. Come off, and now you could do one, two, one. I'm going to do two, three, one. So we started on D. And now we're doing just a little ornamentation, a little turnaround, as it were, that ends up on the E above where we started. You can also think that we're, it's all centered on those three notes, right? These three notes that we started on. That little group there. going to go up and we're going to start a third higher, right? So here was our little group. Instead of starting on D, we're going to be starting on F. And kind of like the beginning, it's three notes in a row, except we skip this G. And kind of similar to this, where we end up a note, three, three notes in a row going up, and then 
the phrase ends with this note beneath the highest note we got to here, but no longer a two, three, one. It's just three, two, one, two. Let's go back to that beginning again. So we're starting on D, three notes in a row. Three, two, one. Two goes right back to the E. Another way to think about it, right? Two and three going right back to the notes they just were. We end up with that note one beneath where we'd gotten to the highest point. And now we'll start a third higher than the D, right? This F, three in a row. Oh, but we skip the G. So this shape with this extra gap between three and two. And this shape will, it'll appear a couple times here. So, and just right back. So let's try that groove to that. slower. So the big pause there, right? So this one, this is four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So we sit on that B for quite a while sit on that high note here, the thumb note. Again, maybe thinking less about the, the specific notes, but just this kind of relationship. There's that, that note here, and I mentioned it's the fourth down. This A is the fourth down from our, our D, or our, that's the, our key, right? And now we're gonna be, we're gonna be up here, and we're gonna do, so we've gone, we're gonna do this little, and again, the fingering, you could do one, two, one, if you felt like it. I kind of like this to find all of them, even though they're out of order, even though we're going to play this note and then not to, even though it would be the next one in order. There's no risk of buzzing, though there's not really any risk of buzzing with one, two, one either. And, but it just, for me, it sits quite nicely under the hand. And we might think of this, let's, let's call this something. So this is maybe an, an, up and down, right? We're up, down, up. Right, that up, down, up. And here's another note we're skipping, this C. Now we do play that C later on, but... So again, this, this fourth here, between this D and, and the fourth down, the A, it's quite important. And then the, we end up on this, on this B, which is a third down. And now our ending, we're going to end on D. We're going to find four notes in a row, except we have to skip that G, right? We never play the G. So we're going to find, right, D, E, F, skip. So that means four is going to be on the A. And this shape with a gap between one and two. So four notes in a row, except skip and the gap between one and two. One, two, three, pause, two, four, two. You could go one, two, three, off, two, two. So let's do this little, we find we find this up and down thing, right? Where we're gonna find three notes in a row, except, except we skip the C, the one underneath our thumb. Let's try that again. And then we find this. That's all that is to it. There's just basically two shapes, right? This ending bit. There's this up and down. And this almost as four note scale, right? Skip the G. And that's it. That's the B sec. Uh, sorry, the A section. Let's try that again. Skip the G. Up 
and down thing. Four notes are uh, almost scale. Do it again. Starting on the D, three, two, one. higher, skipping the G, and here's up and down, starts on the D, this shape where we skip the C, where we, it's not quite three in a row, but it's not this, where we have a gap between two and three, it's the gap between one and two. So another way to think about it, this one is the thumb is going to the note beneath the note we just played. The last note we played, thumb goes one lower. Try that one more time. Up and down. Skip the G. And so, of course, what could happen is a little bit of a little phrase like this that can be easy right in isolation great <laughs> that's no problem or any one of these little bit little phrases as we start to string them together it can start to be much harder to, to to keep that fixed in our mind what what is happening next so again all these little stories that up and down does that maybe then create a oh right that's i know what that is a type of thing so if you can give it a name or something to remember that helps helps kind of solidify things. So let's think again. We start on the D and we're playing three notes in a row. Great. And maybe the hand also starts to, in the short term at least, starts to remember, right. We're gonna end up on that E, this little phrase of, for two phrases in a row, we, we do a string of three notes in a row up, or, and then the phrase will end with a note beneath the highest note we played. So. Here's this shape where we skip the G. And now here's up and down. And remember this, this nice four finger shape, right? Where there's that lovely gap between one and two. And we started on D, we're gonna end on D. Great. Let's go to the B section. So now, I mentioned again that this A, this fourth down from the from the top D is quite important. So here we have that up and down one. Here we just start with that A to the D. And now we're gonna have up and down for the B section where we're gonna find three notes, but instead of instead of these three, it's gonna be the thumb is gonna be one lower on the C. But again, we'll go thumb, three, two. Right, so here's that A to A to D, this this fourth to the root, or the fifth from the fifth up, but fourth down. Another way to think about it, because especially because this little phrase, is we're only dealing with these four notes. Again, from this fourth down to the D. So we're gonna we're gonna be playing just those and we're gonna be playing quite a few of them, right? So up and down for the B section. Now a big sort of scale. So we've done we're gonna start on the note above that, two, because we're gonna do a four-note scale starting from the D, from the root. Oh uh, sorry. I just had the rhythm wrong there. Let's try it again. So A to D, that, that important relationship that comes up quite a bit. It could be an eighth note, it could be a quarter note pickup, depending on how you want to hear it. Again, all just focused on those four notes.
right? That's half of that's half of the B phrase. Then we get so this. Remember the beginning. Three notes in a row, skipping the G, right? So we'll call this one. Mm, let's call this one the returning shape, or we could call it the the um, ever present shape. It, it happens in all the phrases. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that here, and then just a second. <coughs> Then we're going to go back and we're going to find, so we just played these, we're going to find those two notes that two and three just played and do a big sort of extended connected bit because we're going to do five notes in a row going up, so we have to do some sort of connection. So right back to two and three and now right back up on that same ever present um, pattern. We have to skip the C, and again, we skip the C quite often, right? Um, cross under with two, skip the C. Two, one, two. Let's go back to the beginning of the B section. Remember that was with the A and the D. Up and down for the B section. Scale. Here's the repeating pattern, and then this connecting pattern. And that's it, that's it, that's the whole piece because then we go back to the A section. So let's play together the entire B section a few times slowly. Connecting, I mean, sorry, uh, repeating one. Now connecting. So again, after that first half, it's all about this little shape here. Do it again. Scale. Repeating one. Connecting. One more time. The A to the D, fourth. Up and down for B, scale. Great. So I want to do two more things. So that's, that's great. And of course, in this case, the beauty of it is you can actually just go back and replay that and play along with me some more if you want. But I want to talk about the chords and then I want to just demonstrate how potentially easy it is to transpose. So with these chords, oh, and if you would like the sheet music, uh, sign up for my email newsletter, and there should be a link uh, somewhere up here, uh, also in the video description below. Sign up for my email newsletter, and you'll get that and a bunch of other a bunch of other freebies as well. If you're an existing subscriber, the best option I found with Mailchimp is is just just email me. There's a, there'll be a link down in the description below, which will, uh, I think, should autofill the subject of the email and just fire an email off to me and I'll send you a copy of this if you want it. So in this lead sheet, there are chords written, but one of the ways to think about chords are not the name of the chord, but the relationship of the chord. So we're in the key of D. A D chord then would be one, a one chord, and we're gonna start with a one chord. Our next chord is an A chord, and an A, one, two, three, four, five, is the fifth one up. So it's, it's a one, five, then we get a G chord, four, one, four, five, one. So that pattern, and if you've heard, you know, one, four, five, or that's what this is referring to, that chord progression applies to any key. It doesn't matter what key it is, you just follow, you find the root, then you find the 
fifth one up in this case, and then the fourth one up. So here we're going to go root one, one, five, four, and then back to one. This time four first. Again, there are only three major keys in any in any three major chords in any key, and they're the one, four, five. So it makes sense if we just remember this is one, five, four, one, four, five, one. Uh, right? So one, five, four, one, uh, four. So for the B section, now we finally get some minor chords. And so for the first half of the B section, we'll do just use two chords, two minor chords. We'll use the sixth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, which means in this case, it will be a B chord, B minor. And we'll use the second, one, two, three, the F, F minor, F sharp minor, in this case. And so it'll sound like this. Here's our A to D that starts the B section. And here's our sixth, up and down for the B, B section. Scale, down to the second. And now this is just like the ending of the A section, right? So we've already played the one, but it's gonna be four, five, one. Again, so six, six, four, uh, two, two, four, five, one, do it again, A to D, six, up and down, scale and two. So before I go then, I just want to demonstrate, let's suppose we wanted to play this in the key of G. So put down our C sharps. And we could, some people are great at transposing. They, they, they know that, okay, it was in D, it's in G now, it's up a fourth, and I'll just transpose it mentally everything up a fourth. But in our case, we haven't really been concerned about the name of the notes. We just have to orientate ourselves to say, Okay, here's our G, starting G, here's the higher G, what's a fourth down? Well, it's D this time, right? And what's a fourth up? It's C, that's the one we're skipping, we're never playing that C. So we start on G, we play those three in a row. Up and down, or uh, what, what were we calling this one? I don't know that we had a name for it. But it's the one that ends up one lower. For two, three, one. Now, Here's a third higher, right? And we're gonna skip that C, so. And that was, of course, the pattern that comes back later in the B section. And now, we're gonna have the thumb on the G, and here's the up and down, the first up and down. Remember, G and the fourth down as well. And now, we know we're gonna end up on G, it's, oh, that scale with extra gap, and right, because we never play this, this C. Start on G, three in a row, back and forth. Here's skipping the, skipping the C, right? Thumb on G and up and down. For skipping the C. Okay, we know this fourth, right? Fourth beneath and the and the high G. Right? 
right? Fourth, up and down for this, right? Which means the thumb starts one lower. Here's a little scale. What's the repeating pattern that comes through all of them? Well, it skips the C, remember? It skips that note. Must be this. And that means that now we know. Now we know that. We can apply the same thing with a chord. So a one, which is G. Five, which is D. Four. One. Four this time. Scale five one. We go to the B section. So let's quick. Here's our sixth. That's an E, and our fourth. Uh, our second is the is the B. So E B. Skip the C. And now this was a. Four, five, one. So it's C. Five. Uh, I, play, I, I forgot to cross under. I forgot to skip the up to cross under and skip one. have it and again I haven't really talked here about um, you know that you could obviously do a lot of elaboration and and adding some ornaments adding some grace notes but yeah that's hopefully gives you a sense and again maybe you're someone who always plays by ear and this is super familiar and 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 again it's not it's not my area of expertise it's not my my comfort zone as comfort zone necessarily but just an interesting way of thinking about things and so i feel that it would be interesting for me because i don't i don't know that i will be playing this piece that often in the next little while so it'll be interesting to say i so i, I, I tried to learn this by heart before this episode today. And it'll be interesting to say revisit, revisit this then in a couple months and see, not look at the music at all, and see if I had maintained, if I could retain, I guess, that song in a different way than if I'm just reading the music and making no effort to memorize this because I don't have to, I can just read it quite easily. Um, it's not gonna stick, right? And this maybe does make it stick in a different way. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed that and been nice to spend some time together and play along together. And um, I will see you in a couple weeks time. Cheers. <laughs>